What's up, Surge fans? Today's Surge Spotlight is Suge Sutton, a budding basketball legend in St. Louis. Suge talks about her time in the WNBA, her family, and more. Let's get started. What's it been like to be able to play in front of friends and family? It's a great feeling because I haven't played here since high school, so that was a pretty long time. Um, and then my family is my biggest inspiration. They're the reason I you know, play basketball. So um, it's a great feeling just to play in front of them, play in front of my grandma. She hasn't seen yeah. me play in a long time. You know, I, I've known Kalia since I was little, so I've been oh, to really? surge games. Um, I was little when she first started the surge, and I would come mm -hmm. to the game. So we've had a relationship since then, and, you know, just now, um, coming present day and I'm actually playing for her team. So it's pretty cool how we all look out for each other in St. Louis. You played on the Washington Mystics mm -hmm. in the 2020 to 2021 season mm -hmm. uh, when the W was in the wobble due to COVID. What were your experiences like both on the Mystics and in the wobble? My experience was great. Um, it was everything I dreamed of. We were supporting those that were um, killed by police officers. And so that season was kind of special because I got to be around like all these uh, players that were experienced. They knew what they were doing. They knew what they were talking about as far as in the political world. You know, that's the biggest thing. It's not just all about basketball when it comes to the WNBA. Everybody is, you know, standing for something. With your sin the W, I'm sure there were huge moments. The moment you were drafted, the moment you entered your first game, your first bucket. In those types of moments, what things and emotions were running through your mind. As I hear my name called in the WNBA draft, you know, it, I just instantly cry. I was with my family, but, you know, it was a great feeling. And then being on the court with them, being in the WNBA, it was like unreal um, because I looked up to these players. I looked up to Candace Parker. I remember the first time I played against them. I'm like, dude, that's crazy. I was pretty grateful to, you know, be there and be drafted. And, you know, that's something I remember for the rest of my life. And I also did remember my first book. I'll never forget it. Um, I played with actually one of my teammates uh, at Texas, Ariel Atkins. Oh. So we played on the same team. And she got me my first bucket on the floor. Hey. She passed it to me and I shot it. So. Who were the vets on your team and what was your relationship like with them? Ariel Atkins, which was my vet at Texas. Um, so I came into Texas and she was a vet. So I learned from her there and in the WNBA. She always told me like, you know, just calm down. Everything will come to you. Um, you know, I'm a great player. She always told me that and you just trust in myself. Um, and I think I, you know, I continue to take that with me. Um, and just playing with her, she kind of, you know, instilled work ethic. She's one of the hardest workers I've been around um, as a player, um, as a person. So, you know, I take that from her as well. And she probably don't know that because I don't tell her. you look up to the most? I think my dad. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Um, I say him because he's the reason that I'm playing now. He's the reason I'm in that disposition. I always say that because um, he pushed us, my sisters and I, every single day to be better than what we were yesterday. He didn't like it then, but you know, you appreciate it now. If you had to name two to three of the hardest things you've got to overcome to be who you are today, what would they be? One of the hardest, um, my first was the injury that I had, um, my ACL injury. It was kind of hard coming back from that mentally just because I didn't know I would be the, the player that I was before. As a player, I think I was at my best um, when I did turn my ACL and it kind of pushed me back a bit. Um, but, you know, everything happens for a reason. I'm still here. I'm still playing at a professional level. The second thing is, you know, not being able to be on a WNBA team, not being able to be where I want to be. And I think that's something that I've been going through, like, um, as far as going through this adversity and accepting things for what it is and just, you know, being thankful that I'm here and in the position that I'm in and still being able to play professional basketball and still having that time, still young, still trying to figure out, but I know that I'm going to be able to do that and accomplish that. So in one of your Instagram posts from a while back, you talked about learning to appreciate the now. What role does that mindset and that perspective play in your current life? And that kind of something I go by all the time. And, you know, I got it from Kobe Bryant. He's a big influence on my life as well. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, if you go by things and look at the future all the time, you're going to make yourself more anxious or, you know, more mentally cluttered. And I think just focusing on the now and appreciating the now and everything that you can control 
um, you know, it kind of grounds you a bit. I have two brothers. True. Okay. I was listening. <laughs> <laughs> I have one brother. False. True. Ah! <laughs> I've been to Italy twice in one month. True. Oh. Huh. Yeah. True. yeah. Hey, let's go. <laughs> I've been in St. Louis for two years, and I didn't go to downtown St. Louis until this summer. True. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite food is pizza. False. Yeah, that's what <laughs> What'd you think about it? No. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a dog person. False. Yeah. I'm a big video gamer. Ooh. False. <sighs> I'm over it. <laughs> Let's go. The last time I posted on Instagram was 2014. Boss. True. What the heck? <laughs>